Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Microsoft Reactor live stream. We've got a really, really good one lined up today. It is part four of four. But before we get into that one, my name is Liam Hampton. I'm the regional cloud advocate based out of the Microsoft Reactor here in London in the UK. Please, can we just take one moment to read our code of conduct? It's basically just about being nice, being kind, being respectful. Everybody's here to learn. The chat is open, so please ask some great questions. So it give you a moment to read that one. If you have any questions around this, please do feel free to ask. And um, yeah, let's get into it. So I am joined here today with Cyrus Wong and Kairos. They're both joining us here from Hong Kong. This is episode four of four. And today we're going to be learning how to play with Azure through an RPG adventure game. So they're both up on the stream here. Let's talk about quickly what we went through last uh, on Monday, sorry, on episode three. Uh, how does that then feed into today's episode, Cyrus? You are on mute. Okay, actually, the, for the previous topic, I focused on the first topic is, is using CDK to deploy, um, touch up on CDK to deploy all of the application. And today is also uh, built on top of the touch up on CDK. And this is uh, not the topic of today, it's something it's a bit different as this is today we'll have some more fun and uh, and also and uh, we are related to another project we deployed before it's called the also automatic grading engine actually the, the top last year yeah you can uh, go to YouTube and then search that is about how to uh, automatically uh, to grade your grade my student assignment in the in Asha so that uh, for example student able to create the app engine create the resource group something like that. And at the background, actually, this project is also using the CDK Touch from for the deployment. And today, uh, it's another add-on is a game so that we gamify the uh, the assessment and assignment or, or the less students to pay Asha to learn something uh, like in this inside game. Yeah. And this is something to appear in this talk. Uh, I think now it's time to go to start our presentation. And for the topic of the Asha adventure game, is something funny. And let me share my screen. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll take my one off and we'll have your screen on. And um, yeah, I will let you both take it away. And if you need me, I'll be in the background. And any questions that cool. come through, we will try and answer them at the end. And okay. then we've got a few cool. slides to go through to close off. So alrighty. Okay. So yes, see you soon. It's ready. Okay. Um, uh, let's let's explain that today's topic is called the Let's Play Astro Adventure, uh, a RPG game to test your Astro practical skill. This is not just uh, it's really not the question and answer to ask you something like the uh, question about what is Asha or what is the region. No, not this thing. It's a really testing on your skill set on creating Asha resources, uh, full command line, full Asha portal, whatever. And for the speaker today, this is, I'm Cyrus Wong. And actually, I am a senior lecturer of a technical institution in, in Hong Kong. And I am a also a a course leader, program leader to run a two-year higher diploma called the Cloud and Data Center Administration. This is a course we focus on teaching on multi-cloud technology, especially we are also teaching uh, Azure technology for all our students. And then uh, another speaker today is, uh, I invite the curious, uh, he's a primary second, uh, primary six student, he's very young, 10, 10 years old, or 11 years old, I forget it. Um, he is the initiator and give us and uh, give us an idea to build up a game to to let more students to 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 try Asha and also he is uh, he love uh, Malka, uh some robotic game and something and he's he he's the owner of a set nine nine hundred of Hong Kong he's the youngest boy in Hong Kong with this certification and he will uh, focus on learning Asha and keep keep going to take more Asha certification and so on. <laughs> Um, for the agenda today, um, first of all, I will introduce a problem as the, um, yeah, and then I will explain the Azure Auto uh, Metal Grading Engine as the, it's actually one of the back end of the system and just an update for you guys. And then I will, um, ex uh, we will share about uh, what Azure surface in the background I am using and, and what technique behind the scene. I, I just let you know the Azure surface first. And then uh, we will let QS to play the game. And then um, I will, after playing the game demonstration, I will show you, uh, I will 
explain how does it work actually the the logic and the architecture behind the scenes and then also um i will show i will explain how to deploy the game and deploy the grading engine and then finally i will uh answer your guys questions um first of all i said about the problem is quite straightforward actually student loves to play game and learn with fun learn with fun is the key to a successful training or courses it is boring how good is your going and still no one will, will enjoy it and at this moment um uh, there's this not there's no something uh tactical skill game for for asha at this moment so that uh we want to be with and to gamify the learning of creating and delivering cow in a pathetic way pathetical way and my student is all up play the game actually uh i have to ask them is very similar for the previous year and this year uh in the last year uh we don't have the other advantage game here a lot of students is is not really want to start working on their assignment they do it very late uh, at the last day last minute to do the assignment but this year since we got an other advantage game a student at the day one already start playing the game and then start doing their assignment project on asha it's quite different and the uh, learn with fun is the key to a successful training actually yeah um if how good is your training the content is meaningless for the youngest the, the child the student they they do boring or it is is not interesting they will not enjoy the course and they will not be focused on it and then behind the scenes we have a story actually just a like one day i meet curious and he loved test stuff technical stuff and some crowd robotic anything and however um he is a, a outstanding stream student but his classmate or his friend is not really enjoy technical stuff as this is it may feel is boring as you know it's just a, a test wheel a web browser and no interaction and he know that uh if asha if learning asha like a game uh his classmate the kids will be uh interested in to learn the technical stuff with fun and at the end ah uh, his idea is quite good for us and then i my team uh adopt his idea and start to build a web game uh in HTML5 as an adventure uh as an adventure actually it is a an open source HTML, HTML5 uh game and this is built on top of the latest version of Asha Automatic Reading Engine. And the game is, is not complicated, it's quite straightforward. Students just need to in the game to talk about uh, the character, the, the hero there, so to run around and then talk to the uh, non player character NPC. Uh, then they will, uh, the NPC will give them a, a Asha technical task. If students able to complete the Asha technical task within a period, I would say two minutes, five minutes, something like that. Then the student will get some corn from the tasks. Yeah, now it is the uh, bit uh, recap of the Asha automatic grading engine. Uh, actually, this is another uh, project which is the 100% serverless application. This is for uh, is for educator, uh, for trainer to validate their student Asha technical skill, uh, skill and you can use it for your lab design assignment uh project something like that and this is a 100 percent serverless open source uh asha application you can just uh go to microsoft repo it actually this is under microsoft repository you can uh clone it and then install it and it's support for any kind of asha subscription for example you can use a free trial uh you can use the asha for student and also the educational hub and this is a very low cost uh engine as uh we don't have any server behind the scene we use everything serverless and very scalable as we have 100 students together and it is it's no delay no difference everything run in parallel and here is a bit architecture recap and um actually the system have a scheduler um there's an asha function it will uh one it will trigger a asha uh a Great orchestration function to trigger the greater URL with the confidential uh, actually is service principle um, to the grading grading and grade to the greater project. It's another Azure function actually we separate the greater and the engine. 
And we're supposed to be, have uh, the web form to connect the server principle from student and then store it in our, our story table. And then uh, it regularly will send the call to the grader and then it will, it will access one the end unit test to access the Asha student uh, subscription account. And it is using the uh, process to isolation in some the difference is, is actually video is running and EXT to make sure that it will not be called up. And this is an update about the automatic grading engine, the old talk. Um, the previous talk actually we are not using the latest .NET 6 version. Now we are using .NET 6 and we flattening the source code and then we trim down the survey person permission. In the past, we make use of the uh, uh, the, the survey principle actually it is the SDK uh, an Asha SDK command line permission. This is too too much. Now we can just use the read down permission of your subscription. Then it will be able to um grade your grade your subscription to get the map, and and also um the end unit test in the past version actually we are we are using a single binary, but now uh we train the architecture to mount the Asha function onto the Asha file share uh story account file share. So that we can executable, uh, we can no, we no longer require to have a single ex, single file executable. We can have a, a lot of file and just mount of the share folder and execute it. And the deployment uh, in the past is straightforward. It's uh, still okay to use the uh, um, uh, use the ARM to deploy it. But now we are we are migrated to CDKTF so that we can have more more uh, deep, more more step of deployment and. Also, at the end, we have a console project to generate um, the, the, the wrapper, the task.json, the output uh, for, uh, to use us by the other advanced game. Here is the update. Uh, we have we in, we uh, added some uh, new, new attribute to each of the unit tests. It will be regenerated, exported from, into a, a JSON, and then used by the other advanced game. Here is the tech. Here is the output of the of the JSON will be used in the game and the correction of the task you need to do, and then we run the unit test according. And now I will uh, update the uh, recap of the Asha automatic grading engine. I will start uh, give some background information how we use uh, what Asha service actually we are using. Uh, first of all, uh, we do all of our project is using the Asha function. As Asha function actually is, uh, is quite. We, we are focused on using consumption plan. Every do everything using consumption plan actually just create a so our source code to upload into the cloud and then define the trigger and then there if there is any output we just set up the writing and then it is a perfect Asha function function as a service. Um, and we we mainly do to use the uh, uh this for this project we are using window container yeah for the grading engine. And but in the past, somehow we are uh, we are using Linux more. Okay. Um. Now I I give a brief explanation of consumption pan. And this one is the great tools. And if you're using Azure function, you you have tried to think about is this okay to let to use consumption pan? Uh, for consumption pan, you just need to build your your resource that uses. For example, you have you have a function called here. I'll check out it. And then it will build for based on how many seconds you use, how many times you call your function. It's quite cheap. And also, um, for our case, we found that we, we nearly uh just using the money free ground. And it's not it's out of the free trial period. You still can use some Azure function without pay. And sometimes we we don't have to pay anything. Just in just in this level. And also, it is uh for the game situation. Uh, we have one one hundred students playing the game together. Uh, we we'll, we'll we need to run a lot of unit tests at the same time. Uh, we don't have to care about the auto scaling issue when we are using consumption plan. Yes, it's in the limit. We don't have to scale it. And consumption plan also is able to um, so you can add and remove holes you don't care about. Uh, but something you need to uh, remember. Uh, you need to make sure your application. Uh, or your or your function call need to be complete within ten minutes. It is the something you need to know, and sometimes it will be the cool start. Let me cool start is actually yeah. When the first time of calling the function, it will it will it will be a little bit slower slower than than the second time. 
for today, um, our application using Azure function actually the, for the game we are or we are calling the web we are create the web API or uh, web service uh to check out the Azure function to run the unit test and then calculate the map of the student. And one more service uh today is included. And also last time someone asked me, oh, uh, how can you protect your API? And the answer is using API management. Azure API management, actually, you can think about using the wrapper, the wrapper to wrap up your uh, your API. And one of the features is, is very nice is that uh, you grab it up, you can protect it, and also you can you can you can you can set up the quota. Set up the quota is important. Uh, for example, um, for this application, we are we are we want we don't want to the very high frequency crossing. We use an Azure function. We need to pay it according to number of time you call, how long time it used. If someone try to deny of service your API, oh, you may need to pay it, and the bill will be high. But you may wrap it with API management. We just we just set up the usage quota and range limit to protect the API. It's quite straightforward. Here is the enforced range limit uh, configuration. We just need to set up this policy into the API. And then, uh, for example, I mean, a question is straightforward. I just want to block the IP address, single IP address, say one student. One student only allowed to have uh, 60 call and one per, per minute so that uh, it will not to blow up our API call. And to create a, uh, to create the API, actually, we wrap it up into an uh, CDK attached from layer three construct. Um, it's quite simple. You just provide some information. For example, you need to have the physics. You need to have an ASA function app, and then the when you create an API management, you need to have an email address and name, and then provide the pane, uh, the basic one. And uh, if you want to have some uh API user, you can get it here, the default user, and also um. This is a, an array. We will also, after this creation, we will, and another example, we will load a CSV file for every student can will be have a uh, separate API key for his subscription. Uh, actually, the subscription we're talking about in the API management is not the Azure subscription. Actually, inside uh, Azure API management, they, they have its own subscription. This subscription, you can set up a quota. And then each API key can limit the number of times they are calling, and based on frequency and something, you can set up the rule. And also another uh, very nice service we are using. We are actually Azure Adventure Game is a HTML5 static website. Okay, just a static web application, and uh, we want to host a static web application. And you may think about it, oh, just using the storage account, uh, the block storage to set it up as a static web. Okay, it will work. Yeah, you can do it. Um, but it is but if you want to be something very standard, for example, you want to wrap it in in, in, in speed up in CDN and other settings, you want to integrate with the CI C D pipeline using GitHub Action or Azure Devop pipeline, it will be great to use Azure static reps. Uh, apps. It is, it is a package. Then the last, if you command I, you will create a uh, fully working uh, CI/CD pipeline for a for an static web application. The key feature I just mentioned before, oh, is supposed to be a, a static content for um for for JavaScript, CSS, something, and also it provide you to a bit a, a easy integration. You if you want, you can integrate different Azure function at the back end. And it's the first class support for GitHub. Yeah, it's quite quite nice. I just uh, need to log in my GitHub during the command line input, and then it will help me to create the GitHub action, set up the Azure competential, so that I update the GitHub update the GitHub content, just put into GitHub, it will trigger the build and then deploy into Azure. And also it provides us a free SSL certification. We it will also give you a domain, but the domain you know is just something random, but it is nice. Uh, just use it. And uh you then, then you can get the period URL. And here is about the logic. Oh, for the cook design is quite straightforward. I just need to um uh write my source code when there is source code stranger, check the GitHub action, it will automatically to deploy uh, the latest version of the changes into Azure. 
Oh, now it's about the background of Azure Adventure Game. Um, I just mentioned before, it is a, a very simple ad, uh, application. This is a HTML5 static web game and built on top of the latest version of coding engine. And then um, the game you will see soon is just playing inside the game and talking with the NPC, talking to them and then do something. Oh, it's time to play the game. Oh, now uh, let me uh, switch the, give the time to Kiras and then uh, he will show you how to play the game. Sure. Can I present the screen? Uh, just wait for a second, please uh, uh, let them to switch your share screen from me to you. Um, yes, Kiras. So we can't, I can't see your screen. You'd have to share it again. Oh, so okay. share your screen again. What do you see? Yes, I can see it now. Good. So, are you re uh, so if you switch your tab, so there is. This is okay. Yeah, this is perfect. Okay. So, hello, I'm Kiris. I'm from BST WLMC's primary school. And today, I'm going to show you how what I've learned from Azure Adventure. Before I start, I'd like to actually tell you that many games are actually running on Azure, like Minecraft, Flight Simulator, and more fun games in there. And if you want to know more about Azure, this is the for you to create your game. And I'll be showing you how to use this Azure RPG game to create games and extra tools. So let's get to it. So I'll have this service principle link and I have it copied. After I use the link, it will activate, it's like a key and it will activate this page to connect the items I created. Um, and once I did sorry, the tag. I, sorry, Kiris, I have to stop you there. Um, I, we can't, uh, where, where yeah, are you? Screen. Wrong yeah. window. <laughs> yeah, you, you need to share the window where you are. Oh, uh, right. Yeah, that's okay, no worries, you can do it again. You can do it again. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah we have time. Don't have to hurry. Don't worry, <laughs> we, we have, have time. time. Reshare it. Don't worry. Yeah, just relax. Don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> okay. Let's try again. Yeah. Amazing. Sure. Yeah. Here we are. I think we can see your screen now. Perfect. Over to okay, you. Let's let me say it again, shall I? So, yeah. hello. So, let me skip to the point. So, once I click start, you can see the service principle. I will paste the code in there. Once I press this button, it will send me here. And that link or that code actually connects to this page and once I talk to an NPC and it tells me to create something this area will get changed chained to this game to know that I've created a resource group like this one the first NPC hello how are you the first NPC asked me to create a resource group which the name is Pro Project. There, I create it in the resource group. So I'll go to this page, click the resource group here, click create. Then the game asked, the NPC asked me to change the group name or make the group name to this one. Then I'll type it in. Also, it asked me to put it 
to Hong Kong. So Hong Kong is in. Uh, yeah, it's a, you need to yeah. uh, the Hong Kong. You need to Google the yeah. Is it East? Yeah, East Asia. I remember that you double check. Yeah. <laughs> then wait till it's tagged. Then I can click create to see if it works. Now I'll just click that screen to check. I uh, probably over time. So yeah, it didn't give me coins because I crossed two minutes. Oh no. Now I can talk back to this NPC. Get back to the task. And get back for a few minutes. To check if the coins are here. Yeah. Now I got 10 coins because I finished the quest. Now. Okay. This is the second NPC. Hello. Ask me to create a storage account in the resource group name link it here and add a tag name called usage and make the value of it logic also have two minutes i will go home you do it ask me to make oh what happened it asked me to make a storage account so i'll change turn it to one Now, here, storage account. Now, I can create one. And I have to link it. Link it to this one. Yes. Storage name, you can. Name, simply. Yes, this one has to be changed to this one. Yeah, good. Now, due to nothing, it did not tell me. Wait, I forgot. You have to change it to here, or it won't select it. Then I can skip to tags because the NPC did not ask me to do anything else. Now, after you turn the name to usage, copy that. And turn the value to logic. Now I'll copy this. Copy. And if I create it correctly, and wait till it finishes, the NPC should give me some money. In the meantime, while it's loading, you can see down here. Here's a sword. But the NPC is going there. I've got a sword. Oh. Oh, oops. Now, check if it's complete. Now, yeah, yeah it's completed. So, after the second NPC, then, after I completed the second NPC right here, I got $20. I got a 10 extra. Also, you can pick up a sword and press spacebar to cut the bushes. Sometimes in the bushes, you might get rewards like that coin. Then we can go to the third NPC or fourth. Here. Hello. Oh. Sword counts, resource group. This is actually did not change, but it's actually third. This NPC asked me to make a storage account in the resource group. So after you make a storage account, which is length, this one, change the name to usage and make the value to static web. What? Now it's just like this one, but you actually just create a new one. 
in the storage account. The name asked me to do this one. Storage account name. I'll just do this. Simple. Done. It did not ask to change anything else. Wait. So, I have to. It did not ask to change anything else except the tag. Turn it to usage and static web. Then it should do. Yeah. Let's go see if it's done. In the meantime, oh, free heart. We can give hearts. I'll wait till it load. Oh, you're waiting for the NPC to load or waiting for this one to finish loading or creating. You can go to different areas and cut the bushes. This leads to outside more bushes there to cut for extra rewards. Here, you can see there's a mob. And you can see that bush. There's a small hand there. That means you can break the bush and get a reward. Now you can push boxes. And free money. There's one, yeah. You can push the box away. Just like that. Now you can get the heart. Now I probably think. Now it's probably over time by two minutes, so I probably have to find the NPC again. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe uh just about around 10 minutes and oh I maybe mean, just play the game here to, to, to yeah. double check is able to get the mile or not, but mm, it's not able to okay. go on. Yeah, we may we may now I got three ten Oh, okay. Oh, good. Time more. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh. So in ten minutes, I've done three different kinds of tasks to create. As a review, yeah, I created a resource group named after this one. Then, inside the resource group, I've opened two different storage accounts. One which has the tag of usage is the name and the value as logic. The second one, which is the same as usage, but the value turned to static web. Hmm. Yes, okay, That's the great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. In three, yeah. 10 minutes. Thank you. Yeah, maybe maybe it's for today's uh oh you just uh ten minute demonstration is maybe just stop here and then let me okay. uh, let me go back uh for my presentation and thank you very much for the demonstration just stay here and let let's uh let me we have Q and A section and then uh, I think people may get interesting to ask you some question okay uh, uh please help me to share the share my screen again. Hello. Uh, hey, yep, yeah, you're sharing yes. now. Oh, yeah, I got that my screen. Okay. Oh, we just finished the demonstration of Azure Adventure game, and it really is it's not not difficult to to play it, and and even though it it primary second primary school student also able to uh to to play it and then do work on Azure their own. And let me now I continue to talking about the technical part of the the system um how does it work um first of all and um, actually it is part of the grading engine architecture and this part is the i just mentioned before uh we have a file shell we have a executable and then we have the api management to protect the uh people from getting too much and then here is the other advantage game behind the scene actually is that when you when the when you paint the game you're talking to the npc actually it will send out an 
a, a API agent's call include the API key to the API management and the API management will uh, will that will then it will it will call the Asha function to run the executable. And this part is optional. Actually, the, the overall grading engine is a schedule and something. But here we will receive the confidential so that it will be able to do it independent of this uh, grading engine. And you just need the grader. And first of all, I need to credit for the for the game uh, creator. Actually, the, the um Pablo um Biman B Bimame <laughs> Bimerman. Actually, he is uh he has a very great pro, pro series. Is talking about how to create a RPG, uh, web HTML file RPG game, and then we are just uh, actually just throw the pros and then modify his source code uh, to build a game. Since we are not really a game game builder or, or game developer, or we are very really, 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 really naive, naive in game development. We just uh, try to follow up follow his pro and then uh, take out take out the take out the logic and then add it. Uh, add some agent call there, and and finally is about the deployment. Um, for the deployment, it is not difficult. As uh, you have two parts. You need the grading engine assignment. You, if you don't have the assignment, um, you 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 unable to have the grade. The, you you need to deploy this part. This is important. If you, you don't have this part, you will not be able to do anything. Deploy this one. You need to set up the CDKTF. And then go to the infrastructure directory, and then you need to provide some basic information. Uh, here is the campaign. You need to have a you need API name. Someone will not be duplicate with you, and you need your publisher name. You need your email, and then API email address is the first publisher email. And after you running the deployment, CDKTF uh deploy auto approval. And then output the sensitive information. It's as since it's as sensitive as there's an API key here. You need to capture down the API key and the URL so that you need to convert it into the um into the uh, uh Azure Adventure Game Static website. And to deploy the um the Azure Static Web uh website application is quite simple. And uh, for 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 my, for the same command first command, you just need to call my repository, get into the um the other adventure game folder, and then install the log package. But uh, you remember that uh, since this is something uh you must do it in uh Linux platform for window platform you will not able to build it. And other than um uh, assume you have installed your Azure CLI. You just run the login to your subscription and then create the uh create a uh a resource group in here and then you need to convert your your github user account as here uh since you your github action and and then create the Azure static web app is quite very very simple using command line is quite straightforward you just need to have give you a give it a name uh set the resource group and then define the uh, GitHub repository for, for myself. You just fit it here and then change the user and it become the need. And then pick a um, location to deploy a depot in Hong Kong. And then um, pick up the create the branch for which which branch in your GitHub uh, repository, create for the main branch. And then the, the source path is the root. And then we uh, we need to build the output folder here. And then um, the last command log in the GitHub. And then after this command, you will uh you it will prompt you the output uh to to ask you to log in your GitHub and if you're not left you will not log in your GitHub and after a moment uh you just need to run a command call um called the show command and then the application name and then get the repository URL you will find the GitHub repository it will help you to create the repository it will help you to create the GitHub action and and then um. And then uh, in, in your repo, sorry, into your repo. Since the first command is called my repository, this command is your repository. It will create a repository in your GitHub account. And then you get back your uh, repository URL, and then it's ready. And then you can try to query the default host. The default host will be the uh, the URL that, that can pay the Azure Adventure Gap. Okay, oh, for today, I uh, will stop, maybe we stop here, have some more time for the, for the Q and A, since uh, the slide is is not many not many page, 
And uh, please, feel free, please feel free to ask a question that you answer it here. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much, both of you. That was an absolutely brilliant game. Um, gamification when it comes to learning it is certainly a massive, massive game. <clears throat> it was absolutely brilliant to have you on here. So thank you very much. I'm just going to share some questions that we had. So we did have some questions um, in the chat. One of them, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. One of them was, uh, how do you guarantee the order of tasks that should be done? Which was kind of answered in a follow-up um in a follow-up comment from Mick Tam, but um, if we can just share this one, is this correct? Can, can you elaborate a little bit more? Yeah, let me let me elaborate more. Um, actually, we need to have some. This is right. Uh, since the game have the order, you can't ask the student to create a story account before the resource group. Okay, uh, teacher do need to define the the task uh, for the student. What's the what should they doing first? And from, but from the unit unit test point of view, you you want the unit test is it is it, also have its own order. Uh, for example, the unit test will be for the naming convention of the test or the map or name something like that. Um, but for the game, we also have the ex additional uh requirement as the we define the the the, the priority number in the attribute. Uh, seen, if you remember, I have a slide, the slide, one of the pages talking about we, we develop the unit test and then we, we have the game attribute, the C sub attribute. Actually, one of the parameters is called order, and another one is called group play. As the behind the scene, actually, it's not so straightforward. We, for some of the tasks, we need to have one multiple unit test to give the coin to students. For example, we want to have correct region, we want to have correct, uh, correct uh, tacking or something like that. And we using the we divide the tab with the order grouping, and then uh we use C sharp refraction to use refraction to read the unit DLL and then generate the task 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 JSON file. The task JSON file actually is, is will be a PD pointed loaded into the answer adventure game. So then you're talking to the uh, to different NPC. So that you, even though you're talking to different NPC, the order is the same. Talk to NPC yeah. one, NPC two, but if you talk to NPC two first, it will be ask you to create resource group. If you are unable to create a resource group, and go to talk to NPC one again, it will also ask you to create a resource group. So that makes sure the game will be run properly. As the the order there is really have an order behind us in since since creating Asha resources somehow is uh some basic order you need to follow. For example, we have if you continue to play the game, you will, you will see us to create a VNet, uh, create a subnet. Create the security uh, uh, network AC, NACL firewall or something like that, and this it, it will be need to be have the order of create the networking resources. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. That that does kind of actually follow up, and, and I think you kind of answered this question already with within that answer. Uh, saying you know what well, what if you skip specific sections? What if you go straight to the third hub, for example? So yeah, no, I think you kind of answered that already. Where, where I'll always ask you to, yeah. to do yes, the right uh, order. We may, in the future, we can think about it as the uh, as we can have the different section with different resource scope to create something very different. It's logically fine, but we still have inside a subsystem. We do need to have an order. Otherwise, it will not be working. We may be stage one is a is a web application. Stage two, we, we, it may be a a, a serverless application. Yeah, a, a Azure function or, or, or anything. Yeah, we can do anything in the game. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much for answering those. I think that was only the real questions in the chat. Um, I, I mean, I want to ask how, how did you how did you sort of get into thinking about all of all of this? How did you create the game in the first place? Where did all of that? Where did the idea come from? Was that like a, a knack yeah. to wanting to learn Azure in a fun way? What was what was kind of the driver behind it? Yeah, uh, actually, we, 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 I, I know curious. Uh, actually, we're talking about oh, how 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 to. Let let the, the student primary school student to learn to learn Azure. I mean, it's something discussed in the moment because they say that it is something very hard and borrowing. Yeah, you know, set up Azure resources and set up the network, some other server to a secondary primary school student. This is it's nothing to do with them. <laughs> not not funny, not like funny. But once we wrap it into a game and some interesting, they can they can have a competition. They can do it together 
uh, they become uh, we want to have an have have something to to motivate student to learn to learn Caltech or uh, Caltech technology and uh, and we found that but in the general we will feel that Caltech is something for the not for junior it's for more senior student the university student high school student maybe minimum yeah it's high school student but now I can with the game something like that we can still because promote to the very very junior student that they just like learn something to pay something and then get some reward maybe in the future the coin in the game will will be the reward for something give will give to students oh to pay Microsoft is sponsor a, a bottom uh bottom a, a some souvenir um they can complete the game and then they can they can get a badge and get it into the profile or something yeah um but the motivation is really about how to promote uh students to learn STEM yeah but STEM a lot of STEM is just Lego okay Lego robotics one but for cow cow computing it says it's really not not see any many very young students young 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 students who to learn it but now we yeah. have a way to promote it. I think it's absolutely lovely. I, I really do. It was it was really fun to watch. Um, and I, to be fair, I think I, I could certainly learn a thing or two about Azure by going through yeah, one of those we games. Have, we have a new game developing now. Uh, we are uh, trying to Perfect. integrate Mario Kart. Uh, yeah, the next version will be in Mario Kart. Yeah. One Perfect. Of my, one wow. of my students just try to uh, create a Mario Kart game integration similar to also Adventure, but this yep. time it will be in 3D in MetaRest. <laughs> Oh, lovely, lovely. Well, we'll have to get you back on for that one, um, because yeah, unfortunately, it, this it was happy later. yeah, this was the end of your four sessions, wasn't it uh, today? So today was episode four of four. Um, absolutely massive, well done, and thank you for sharing such uh, invaluable knowledge with our community. Uh, it's been brilliant having you on. So a massive thank you, uh, especially to all of your guests as well. I, I know not all of them are here, but um, today, Kyrus, thank you. That was a brilliant presentation, and Cyrus. Um, yes, brilliant all around. So thank you very much. Um, so yeah. I'm just going to probably wrap up those questions there, but I, I've got a few things that I, I need to go through. So I'm going to put my screen on this, uh, share my screen, sorry. So what's happening next for Microsoft Reactor? Well, tomorrow we have got the EMEA Student Summit. So that is Europe, Middle East and Africa Student Summit, which myself, Corey, and Hadil, so my counterparts or my colleagues from uh, from across uh, Europe and Dubai, uh, we're going to be hosting the Student Summit. So please do come along if you want to learn a little bit about GitHub, a little bit about cloud, and hear from experts in the industry, how they got into tech themselves, and their background and their stories and where they're going. From the 12th to 14th of October, next week, we have got Microsoft Ignite. That is one of our biggest global conferences. Uh, I will also be at the UK Spotlight. So watch out for us on the live streams there. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. We've got some brilliant topics all around security, all around low code, no code. Doing more with less is the overarching theme. So it's going to be brilliant for those of you who are looking to upskill in your tech roles, looking to maybe switch roles or just get into tech, uh, tech industry itself. So please do have a little watch. It's all gonna be online. Uh, and of course, if you're watching this in person, there are spotlights, six of them around the globe. And then on the 19th of October, so almost two weeks from now, I will be starting a new series called Learn Go with Liam. So I'm a Go engineer as a background. So before becoming a cloud advocate, I wrote a lot of Go code. So I'm going to be teaching the fundamentals of how to start with Golang and then following up in the new year, hopefully with a workbook on using Azure with Golang. So a massive thank you to everybody who has stuck around. A huge thank you to our guests on the Microsoft React channel who have joined us over the past few weeks. And with that, I would just like to say, if you want to follow up on any of this, please do get in touch. Our Twitter handle is MSFT Reactor. So please do tweet us if you have any questions. Uh, our, everything is obviously uh, recorded. So it's all on YouTube at aka.ms forward slash reactor YouTube. And of course, you can join our meetup group in the UK here in London if you scan that QR code on the screen. So with that one, I'm going to wrap up the stream and say a massive thank you and see you soon. Okay, see you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.